Today we're at Gary Cadwell's property um, near Crookwell and we've got a whole group of people coming to talk about land stewardship. It's lovely to have you out here today. You've probably picked the only dry day I think we've had in the last four months so you, you've timed it really well and we basically are just a family farm, a family run up enterprise on the fourth generation. And my son who's on an international basis just not locally we all share the one common theme and that's you know, the conservation, the, you know, the resilience of our landscape and making it a better place for all to live and be and to produce good clean quality food. We're really excited to learn from you all and, and see if there are some common challenges that we're sharing. So I'm Travis Anklum, I'm a facilitator at the University of Montana and I'm working with this group uh, to coordinate an exchange here in Australia between land stewards from the US and land stewards here. The stewardship, when I thought about it, and I was thinking about it this morning, it's that little thing that can be passed on from generation to generation that instills in the next generation coming forward all of those little things that matter. The US and Australia share uh, many challenges right now with uh, extreme weather, changing environmental conditions, big fire, big flood, big heat. Um, we see Australia as kind of an analog to what we're facing uh, in uh, the western United States. We want to know what you folks are doing with regards to land stewardship and both using western science and traditional knowledge to kind of figure out how to deal with these challenging problems. So we're probably looking at you know, 300 plus years of age on those trees. And I mean, you hear Gary talk about not just what's going on in his head when he's working on his farm and he's trying to enact stewardship practices here, but what's happening in his heart. You know, so often we, we get up in our heads when we're talking about conservation and we don't get to the heart and people's direct connections with land and their families and how this landscape has given to them. And you can hear that so clearly when Gary speaks about why he's caring for this country. And then it's still being done in a way where he can be a viable farm. Can we bottle him up and take him back to the United States? Because what he's doing here is, is absolutely inspiring. I mean, this is the message we have to get, is that ag and conservation can work together. You know, you can grow um, crops and you can also grow conservation. And we have to hear this. We don't hear this story enough. We've done a number of studies in the United States, and, and some of them in the areas that I've worked, where we've looked to what is it that inspires and motivates people to participate in groups like Landcare, in stewardship programs. And what we've found is, it's often the need to want to resolve and support the protection of an environment or help you know, reduce an impact to something they love. What we've found that keeps people involved, for the most part, is that building of community and connectivity with each other. And so it creates this wonderful weave in communities that when there's emergencies or when other things happen like floods or fires, that community network and that sense of care for each other is inherently there and a part of just community way of life. Going through the pandemic and having COVID um, shut all of us down and, and, and it, the human species was very quick to respond to a global threat and climate change is a global threat that isn't immediate enough to, to most people yet. Um, but I'm hopeful that we can all um, pay closer attention to what the needs of the planet are so that uh, uh, my as unborn great-grandchildren have, have something to look forward to. Like-minded people always enjoy the same thing and it doesn't matter where we come from or what our background or who we are. When you come together, it's a common theme of yeah, real love and enjoyment of what we do. This is the future. This is how we're going to be able to save our planet and feed ourselves and provide for um, our livelihoods at the same time. And, and I, I feel Gary is a leader in this.